I came down from Vancouver Island yesterday and it was so rainy and windy, I hardly uh, made it off Vancouver Island on the float plane. So I, I'm grateful to be here to be able to uh, talk with you about detoxification lifestyle. What I'd like you to think about uh, as I'm talking is uh, key toxin avoidance strategies that we can all use in, in our lives for prevention of chronic disease and, we, and ways that uh, you can implement these strategies including diet, uh, nutrient supplementation and lifestyle uh, to optimize the mobilization of toxicants, detoxification pathway function and excretion of the biotransformed toxins. A very simple concept is the total toxic load and that results from the, the total exposure uh, to toxicants we have minus the ability to biotransform and excrete those toxins. Detoxification is more accurately described as the biotransformation of toxicants and that involves two steps. Phase one, where the toxicants, whether they come from inside the body or outside the body, are activated by a series of enzymes and then shunted over to phase two, uh, where something is added to the toxicant to make it more likely to be excreted. This is a simple diagram that explains what I just said. We have the parent compound, uh, that comes into the uh, cytochrome P450 phase one uh, enzyme systems where they go through various uh, chemical reactions such as oxidation, reduction or hydrolysis. And then that activated compound is usually more toxic than the original parent compound. And then that activated compound is shunted over to phase two where something is added to it, that, and that could be uh, a glutathione molecule or it could be a single or double carbon molecule or uh, an uh, amino acid. This is a more complex diagram of what I've just said. And the toxicants, whether they come from outside or inside the body, they go through phase one, the cytochrome P450 system, where they become activated and uh, then shunt it over to phase two where something is added. And this makes them more water soluble and more likely to be excreted. Now these uh, detoxification or biotransformation reactions, they take place not just in the liver, but in all the cells lining the intestine, uh, our lungs, our brain, uh, kidneys and skin. Now, often people will come to you in your practice and, and they'll say, Doctor, I, I want a, a detoxification program. And when I explain to patients that we don't have a program for them, but what I encourage them to think about is lifestyle. Because lifestyle means lifelong best practices. And who is the best person to model this? Well, it's you and, and I, of course. Now, this is a picture of the Canadian men's eight uh, rowing team. Uh, they were uh, in the Olympics and they, and they won gold in Beijing in 2008 and silver in London in 2012. So why would I be bringing this up in a detoxification lifestyle lecture? Well, just as it takes eight elite athletes uh, pulling together to win gold, it takes many great strategies working together to de succeed in this detoxification lifestyle. So we'll be talking about the various rowers in this lecture, and, and you can pretend that you are the owner or manager of the boat, and then you must choose who is going to row on your team. So you want uh, detoxification lifestyle gold. So the first roar is we want to reduce our exposure we, uh, and reduce our toxic load. 
So we all know that we should reduce the use of pesticides and herbicides in homes and garden. And here's a list of foods with strawberries being at the top and cucumbers at the bottom as far as pesticide content. We want to consider eating organic whenever possible, especially when it comes to meat and dairy. We need to be cautious about our consumption of fish because a lot of the fish uh, these days is contaminated with mercury and uh, ch chemicals and so on. We want to drink uh, as pure and high quality water as possible. And we want to not have these in our teeth. And this is a picture of dental amalgams. They should be called mercury amalgams. How many here in the audience have mercury amalgams in their teeth? Uh, and how many here would have root canals in their teeth? It's interesting, usually more hands go up for the root canals than mercury. Uh, I think that things are changing. More people are aware of the mercury, but we shouldn't ever have this highly toxic compound in our mouths because when mercury is in this um, alloy in the teeth, uh, it off gases and comes into us. And root canal teeth, um, they're generally dead. And, and any place in the body where we have dead tissue, it's like a magnet for bacteria to move in and thrive. And then these bacteria, usually anaerobic, produce a series of uh, toxicants or poisons that uh, can cause raging disease elsewhere. We want to make sure that we're using natural cosmetics and nail polishes and fragrances, if, if at all. Non-toxic cleaning agents, non-toxic building materials, and we want to limit our exposure to electromagnetic radiation as much as possible. And the case study at the end of this lecture uh, will amplify this. There's a growing body of research um, worldwide showing the, the harmful effects of exposure to electromagnetic radiation. Uh, Dr. Devra Lee Davis is one of the leaders in the US uh, researchers and uh, writers and lectures on this topic. Two years ago, I was privileged to be asked to be a co-writer of this chapter in the textbook Advancing Medicine with Food and Nutrients in the second edition. And the chapter is Electromagnetic Hypersensitivity and Implications for uh, Metabolism. And in that chapter, I point out that an important aspect of the detoxification lifestyle is the elimination of abnormal electromagnetic fields and the restoration of balance in the body's innate electromagnetic grid, which is also called the living matrix. The highly effective tools have been developed to assist the body in balancing this living matrix, such as biofeedback when combined with focused field stimulation or uh, on-demand. Another thing that we need to do is breathe clean air, um, and we should have filtering systems in our homes and offices. So here's the top 10 lifestyle choices to decrease toxin exposure. Rower number two in the detox uh, lifestyle gold team, we want to optimize the biotransformation of toxicants. So we want balanced and effective phase one and phase two detox. This is the worst case scenario where you have upregulated phase one and downregulated phase two. So the toxicants, as they're coming through phase one in this scenario, they're whistling through those enzymatic pathways too quickly. And th these activated toxicants uh, build up in the middle there and overwhelm the phase two detox pathways. Sometimes genetically people uh, are designed for poor phase two detoxification. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of upregulated phase one. So in order to optimize biotransformation and, and balance biotransformation, 
we can easily use nutrition to support phase one and phase two. And we also want antioxidants to quench the free radicals produced from phase one and phytonutrients to induce phase two. So for phase one, uh, broad spectrum nutritional support is important. We get this mostly from food. And phase two, we want to supply the cofactors uh, such as whey powder, N-acetylcysteine, glutamine, glycine, sulfur, and so on. This is really the crux of the matter. We want to eat a rainbow diet, a variety of uh, plant foods mostly of uh, different colors several times each day. These will pr produce or provide uh, the, the uh, antioxidants needed to quench the free radicals uh, produced by phase one reactions. And uh, here is an example of a polyphenic uh, phenolic antioxidants such as flavonoids, uh, the isoflavones and lignans. So flavonoids uh, can come from elagic acid or green tea, catechins. There's the class of glucosinolates from the cruciferous vegetables and monoterpenes from citrus fruits and cherries. So here's uh, pomegranate, which is a great source of elagic acid, as you can see. Here's one of my favorite uh, vegetables, broccoli in the cruciferous uh, family. I have steamed broccoli every day at supper time, and I put a lot of kale in my shake, as I will show you shortly. There's also uh, melt thistle that we're all familiar with, uh, curcumin that comes from the spice turmeric, uh, carnosol, and then the last three come from the cruciferous vegetables, indole-3-carbonol, methane, and the sulforaphanes. Now, rower number three in our detox lifestyle gold team, we want to increase mobilization of stored toxicants. So we can do that in various ways. Uh, losing fat mass is one way. Exercise, uh, chelation, therapy using either natural chelates that such as come from the alginates from algae and seaweeds or we can use uh, pharmaceutical uh, chelators such as oral DMSA IV or oral DMPS and uh, IV uh, EDTA in our clinic we have a far infrared sauna Patients use that as part of their detoxification uh, strategy. Here's a picture of a person having uh, EDTA chelation therapy. And EDTA chelation therapy involves administering this intravenous chelating agent, which will remove heavy metals uh, from the body. Uh, chlorella is a very good chelating agent, a natural chelating agent and it's been extensively studied and used in Japan. And this will increase the excretion of various metals such as lead, cadmium, uranium, mercury. And uh, it will accelerate elimination of chlorinated hydrocarbons. Now, rower number four on your detox lifestyle gold medal team, we want to decrease the redistribution of toxicants and increase the excretion and the uh, we do this through the bowel health program, or the 5R program, which involves removing things that shouldn't be in the gut, replacing things we're short of, re-inoculating with the, the friendly bacteria to repair or regenerate, and we want to retain what we gain. So in minimize re redistribution, one simple strategy is to increase the various types of fiber in the diet. We can also use cholagogs or choleretics that will increase the production of bile and flow of bile through the liver. So there's various foods such as artichoke, uh, Oregon grapefruit, dandelion, and glucaric acid. 
Sweating also enhances the excretion of toxicants, and that's induced with exercise or with sauna work. Now, enhancing the fecal excretion uh, through the biliary route, D-glucaric acid is very helpful for this, and it's found in the cruciferous vegetables, citrus fruits, apples, apricots, and so on. And the importance of uh, glucaric acid is that it inhibits this enzyme called beta-glucuronidase. And beta-glucuronidase is found in the bacteria in the gut. And this enzyme will cleave toxicants that have attached themselves to bile. And then those toxicants can then be recycled back into the body. So uh, adding D-glucaric acid helps to control uh, this enzyme beta-glucuronidase. Now the Institute for Functional Medicine has spent years uh, working on uh, a system to help us think uh, critically when we have these complex cases come into our office. And this model is called the functional medicine matrix. And on the right side, you will see there's uh, various uh, clinical imbalances. There's seven of them, starting at the top, assimilation, defense and repair. On the right side, energy, biotransformation and elimination, what we're talking about today. And then in the center of the matrix is the mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of the uh, patient. And on the left side are the antecedents, triggering events, and mediators. And then at the bottom, the foundation for the matrix are the personalizing lifestyle factors, such as sleep and relaxation, exercise, nutrition, uh, and so on. So I will use these lifestyle factors as the next rower, rowers on our uh, detox lifestyle team. So rower number five is nutrition and hydration. We've, we must always start with food. And you can see here's a, a market to be found in many countries. I was privileged to lecture in Korea at the end of June and we attended uh, some of the old markets there and looked just like this. The Institute for Functional Medicine uh, put on this symposium uh, at the end of June. This is their annual symposium. And this year it was Functional Perspectives on Food and Nutrition, the ultimate upstream medicine. And the entire four days uh, looking at nutrition could be summed up by Michael Pollan's book, Food Rules. There's three statements here that are easy to remember. Number one, eat food. And I've put in brackets, real food. Number two, we need to eat mostly plants. And number three, not too much. So those are easy for us to remember when we're meeting with patients. We need to think of the rainbow diet we need to be eating foods that are the various colors of the rainbow several times each day. So foods that are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, black, white, tan, and brown. This is very easy to remember when we're preparing meals. Now, I've written a paper called Nutritional Aspects of Detoxification in Clinical Practice and that will be published soon in Alternative Therapies in Health and Medicine. And it goes over this whole issue of nutrition and detoxification in great detail. I'm often asked, what do I eat? Well, I make a nutrient-dense shake uh, six days per week. And I drink a half of it at breakfast and about a third for lunch and then the rest for uh, uh, mid late afternoon snack. At supper, have some sort of animal protein, so I'm type O blood, um, plus a big plate of steamed vegetables of various colors, followed by a, a piece of dark chocolate. Sometimes it turns out to be two or three pieces. <laughs> 
And then one day a week, I give my gut a day of rest from food and have a detoxification day. I use medical food products designed to help support detoxification pathways. I drink lots of water, do some walking, worship, sleep, and spend time with my family. When people ask me what I put in my shake, and I hand them the recipe, and this is what I put in my shake. I start with a big bowl of berries, five kinds of berries, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, cranberries, and strawberries. And then I put in a whole organic lemon, peel and all, and then I put in a whole grapefruit, minus the peel, one raw egg, a whole bunch of kale, a salad bowl full of mixed greens, one cup of whey powder, four drops of iodine, eighth of a teaspoon of uh, Himalayan salt, a handful of almonds, a teaspoon of xylitol, a half a cup of turmeric, my favorite anti-inflammatory spice, one teaspoon of inulin that comes from the chicory root, one cup of plain yogurt, two te teaspoons of prickly pear cactus, and that's a wonderful fiber that slows down absorption of sugars, two teaspoons of hemp seeds, one teaspoon of acai berry powder, um, a tablespoon of dark cocoa, and one heaping tablespoon of virgin coconut oil. I make sure I drink adequate water throughout the day, high quality water. Now the next rower is number six, exercise and movement. And there are a growing number of uh, articles published showing how important exercise is to help us detoxify from uh, heavy metals and chemicals. Now, people often ask me, the patients ask me, doctor, what do you do for exercise? So I tell them, that I follow the program developed by Dr. William Evans called AstroFit. Eccentric resistance training, which is about 15 to 20 minutes three times a week, and then interval training, 15 minutes three times a week. And then I stand on my whole body vibration machine uh, one or two times a day, and I do all my stretching and Florax exercises while I'm vibrating at 40 cycles a second. So here's me doing my eccentric resistance training. And this only takes me about 12 to 15 minutes, three times a week. And then I finish with my famous shake. And you can see it's a yellow-orange color from turmeric, that great anti-inflammatory spice. So the last two categories on the uh, personalized lifestyle factors, roar number seven, stress and resilience, relationships and networks. As we go through life, all of us need to learn to love God, to love others as we love ourselves, and to walk in forgiveness. Dr. Mimi Guarnari, who is the founder of the Scripps Center for Integrative Medicine and Integrative Cardiologist. She gave a lecture on this topic uh, in 2012 at the IFM Symposium. And one thing she said I will never forget. She said, you have to do your forgiveness work. You can eat all the Brussels sprouts, kale, broccoli, and everything else you want. But if you are eating it with anger in your heart, with revenge and hostility, it is not going to help you one bit. And how true that is, and we see this uh, all the time in our patients who choose not to forgive. Uh, Dr. Guarneri uh, talked about the uh, Stanford University Forgiveness Project headed up by Fred Luskin. And they found that forgiveness allows a feeling of peace that emerges as you take hurt less personally, you take responsibility for how you feel, and you become a hero instead of a victim. They found that forgivers had greater optimism, less anger, 
less stress, and they felt healthier at the end of the study. Now the last roar, and very important, is sleep and relaxation. So roar number eight in your detox lifestyle uh, gold winning team is sleep and relaxation. And there are again more and more papers being published about this important subject. This uh, paper was published two years ago called Circadian Regulation of Hepatic Endobiotic and Xenobiotic Detox Pathways, Time Matters. They found that endobiotic and xenobiotic metabolism occurs under circadian regulation through the suprachiasmic nucleus, or the, which is the master oscillator of the brain, called the SCN. The SCN entrains organs via environmental light cues through our eyes, an input from food composition and intake. Circadian rhythm of the liver depends on SCN input from the brain, signals from endocrine tissues, and the time and type of feeding and xenobiotic intake. They found also that jet lag, shift work, and dysfunction of core clock genes would lead to periods, uh, changed periods of activity, sleep disorders, disturbed glucose homeostasis, breast and colon cancers, and metabolic syndrome. So sleep and relaxation are very important members of the uh, detox team. So I'll end with this lecture with a short case study. The woman with complex uh, regional pain syndrome and each of us, as we develop our practices of integrative functional medicine, we will become like detectives, like the Sherlock Holmes. So the case of the woman with complex regional pain syndrome. This is a 17-year-old uh, young woman that I met uh, two or three years ago, a grade 12 student with complex regional pain syndrome in her right leg. Three and a half years earlier, she had a minor injury to her right knee while playing basketball. The right patella became swollen and painful over the following six weeks, and pain spread down her leg to her foot, and conservative measures failed. So she was referred to a sports medicine doctor who ordered an MRI. That was normal. She went on to see two orthopedic surgeons who prescribed more conservative measures, such as analgesic steroids, NSAIDs, antidepressants. She ended up on long-acting and short-acting morphine and also on pregabalin. She went and saw a neurologist who made the diagnosis of CRPS. She also went to many uh, what we call alternative practitioners acupuncture, physio, chiropractor, massage, uh, naturopath. She had cold laser for 12 sessions, all with no improvement. She saw two pain specialists and was given 10 lumbar sympathetic blocks at two-month intervals, which gave minimal relief of pain. Now, I've learned over the years that taking an environmental history is very important in these complex cases. So her environmental history, she'd had no unusual exposure to metals or chemicals. I looked in her mouth, there was no mercury amalgams, but she frequently used a cell phone, held it to her head, many calls each day. Uh, there were two cordless phones in her home, as well as industrial grade uh, wireless uh, in her school and residential grade wireless in her home. Physical exam, she walked with a limp on the right. Um, her blood pressure, you can see, was low, 88 over 60. Her right lower leg and foot were a slight dusky color and cool to touch. There was mild edema in the right uh, lower leg and foot, and the skin was tender and quite sensitive to touch. She had 14 out of 18 
uh, tender points that were positive and her skin was dry. Interestingly, all her lab tests were uh, within normal limits. She had many imaging studies, x-rays, MRIs, lumbar spine, pelvis, and right knee within normal limits. She had a bone scan that showed increased activity in hyperemia in keeping with the traumatic arthropathy, or CRPS. A venous Doppler study of her right leg was negative. So based on all of this, I set up a simple treatment program, put her on an anti-inflammatory alkaline type diet, fish oil, six capsules per day in split dose, very high dose of oral curcumin, almost eight grams per day in split dose with food. And then we gave her biofeedback focused field stimulation using our on-demand unit, a brilliant unit. We gave her two one-hour sessions per week, and we combined that with cold laser over five weeks. And then I had her decrease her exposure to electromagnetic radiation, personal use, and uh, at uh, home and school. The results, within two weeks of starting the treatment program, she was pain-free. Her right knee and lower leg normal temperature returned, the color returned, no further swelling. She was able to wean herself off pregabalin and all the morphine she was on. The pain and disability did not return and she went on and resumed an active lifestyle going on to university. So just as it takes eight elite rowers pulling together to win gold, it takes many great strategies working together to succeed in a detoxification lifestyle. So today we've talked about the various rowers on your detox lifestyle gold team. Rower number one, reduce toxic load, minimize exposure. Reduce number two is optimize biotransformation, phases one and two. Rower number three, we want to increase mobilization of stored toxicants. Number four, decrease redistribution and increase excretion. Number five, the importance, foundational importance of nutrition and hydration. Number six, exercise and movement. Number seven, stress and resilience, relationships and networks. And number eight, sleep and relaxation. Thank you very much, and I would like to mention that there is a, a workshop tonight uh, on cellular detoxification and on-demand. Uh, you can look that up in your program. You'd be welcome to attend. We'll be uh, talking about uh, cellular detoxification in much more detail. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Klein.